Paul is, is now heading home. Uh, this is an emotion-filled time, a very emotion-filled time, uh, because uh, Paul knows uh, by the Holy Spirit witnessing to him in every city, he says, that sufferings are awaiting him. And uh, uh, later in Acts 21, we see some of the believers through the Spirit saying, don't go up to Jerusalem, we don't want you to die. Paul says, I am, uh, I don't want to use the term hellbound for Jerusalem, but uh, I am going to Jerusalem. What is Paul bringing with him, class? What is Paul bringing with him on this last trip from Macedonia and Achaia and Asia Minor to Jerusalem? What, not who, what is he bringing with him? Gifts. This is oftentimes off? overlooked. Uh, even Jericho's miss this, Gentile. I think. What? Gentile. No, offerings and the offerings, yeah. money bags. Oh, yeah. he, he's got a group traveling with him. They have coinage. You know, you didn't have, a, a, you know, a, 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 a bills of receipt or, 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 or things like that, or credit cards or, or deposits in bank accounts. Uh, j j uh, just think of the thatness that Paul had in bringing all of that money uh, not for himself, but to give to the poor saints in Jerusalem. Why? Because this was a token that these predominantly Gentile churches in Greece, one of which was Philippi, were part of the same body with the Jewish believers in Jerusalem. And they were wanting to help the, uh, the uh, Jewish believers in Jerusalem. We are one. This is a very big thing. And if you want to read about Paul's heart in this regard, Romans 15. Read that. As he writes to, to, uh, to the believers in Rome, he's never been there. And he says, I want to come there. I want to come there. But before I come to you, I must fulfill this sacrifice in Jerusalem. He saw, he used this priestly language in Romans 15 about how he's offering up the Gentiles as a sacrifice to God. It's, a, it's really driving him uh, that he uh, would, would bring this offering as a physical token and a monetary token of the uniting of Gentile believers and Jewish believers. Already in Acts 15 it had been said theologically. My main man James said, Dio, Crino, I therefore I decide that we're not going to put a yoke on these Gentiles. They do not have to be circumcised uh, to be part of the a new community of the Messiah. Uh, just do a few things to uh, avoid uh, uh, insulting the local Jews, but they do not have to be circumcised. It was very important now that Paul bring this offering of the Gentiles to James and the Jewish believers in Jerusalem uh, as a token. I'm offering up the Gentiles to God. This is the crown of my ministry. I've got to get there. And yet in every city, the Holy Spirit is saying, Paul, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. Uh, and he knows that. There's a lot of emotion here. All right. Now, he says to the uh, Ephesian elders, I'm not going to see you anymore. I'm not going to see you anymore. This is the last time. A lot of emotion here. Now they weren't sitting in the theater. I'd like to say that. They're, not, now they're probably on the shore uh, uh, of the harbor because immediately after, can you see them? They're, they're following him, maybe holding on to him, and, and he's getting away from them to get on the ship. It's a, an emotion-laden laden passage. I'm not going to see you anymore. These people owe their salvation, humanly speaking, to Paul when he came here and he taught uh, here in Ephesus for three years. So he, he can't take the time because he's probably almost viewed as spiritual public enemy number one in, in Ephesus because of the riot in Acts 19. He can't go up there. And also, he's got to get to Jerusalem by Pentecost. All right, come on, guys, let's hurry, get on the bus. Let's go. We got to get to Ephesus by by the afternoon. I got to get to Pentecost time. So so I can't go up the harbor because the water reached all the way to Ephesus in those days. I can't take time for that because who knows? I might be detained by the authorities again, or I might get involved and invested in in, in the people's lives again. So he sends maybe Trophimus. I like that idea. Trophimus goes up. Paul is waiting here. Maybe he's waiting, stirred in the spirit. Uh, you know, he's uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, a section earlier in the chapter that 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 he 
is, is walking alone. He leaves the ship and the ship goes south and he walks over land. I like the idea that this is Paul's Garden of Gethsemane experience. Just as Jesus is agonizing, knowing what lay uh, before him and, and the suffering, Paul is walking over land before he joins the ship again. What's he thinking about? Every city I go to, the Spirit of God tells me I'm going to suffer in Jerusalem. Am I going to do this or not? Am I going to do it or not? And he determines he's going to do it. And even when people say, don't go, Paul, you're going to die. He says, I'm ready to suffer and die in Jerusalem because I want to finish my course. And so he sends them. They come here and probably on the beach, he says this. When they arrived, he said to them, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came in the province of, what province? What's the name of this province? Asia, right. I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, with tears. Paul was not afraid of emotion. Keep the stiff upper lip. Don't ever allow yourself to cry in front of people. <laughs> Paul says, I, I served you with tears. And in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents, you know I've not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you. I've taught you publicly and from house to house. I've declared to both Jews and Greeks they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Through verse 21, he talks about his past ministry with uh, Ephesus. Uh, you see it described historically in the previous chapter in Acts 19, where he's lecturing daily in the school of Tyrannus. And, and the word of the Lord goes out throughout Asia. And these other cities hear the word of the Lord. He reflects back on what he did. Now he, uh, he, he starts to talk about what's going to happen to him. Verse 22, now compelled by the Spirit. Don't tell me Paul was wrong in doing this. But now and then I see something, and Paul was wrong in doing this. He, even the great G. Campbell Morgan, preaching in uh, the Westminster Chapel in London, in his commentary on Acts, says, Paul made a mistake. He didn't listen to the Lord. And he went up to Jerusalem and the whole thing went haywire in Jerusalem. He made a mistake. I, wonder, I don't think Paul thought he was making a mistake. Compelled by the Spirit. I'm going to Jerusalem. Got these money bags here. I got the guys laden down with gold and silver and tetradrachms and denarii and all sorts of things like that. We're going to think of the danger of carrying all that money. Staying in inns and along the way. I'm compelled by the Spirit. I... I not knowing what will happen to me there. Uh, what he means by that in details. I might be killed in, in Jerusalem. And he was almost killed. I only know this. In every city the Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Now I consider my life, listen to this, I love it. I consider my life worth nothing to me. It's not my physical life that didn't count. My only aim is to what, gang? Finish the race. Finish the drama on it. We see the hippodromos, hippodromos. We saw that hippodrome, hippos, horse, dramas, course, race course. Uh, just as the horses race around the dramas, I want to finish my race. Guys, finish your race. It's easy to get in the race. It's harder to finish the race. Finish. Don't quit. Don't give up. Some of you are just getting into adulthood. Your race is before you. What does Paul say at the end? I have fought a good fight. I have finished the what? The dramas. I've finished the course. Finish it, guys. Don't back out. Don't drop out of the race. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Keep looking for the prize. That's what's motivating Paul. I want to finish the race. And complete the task that the Lord has given me to testify the gospel of the good news of God's grace. Content of the gospel, God's grace, repentance toward God, faith in the Lord Jesus. Here's, his, here's Paul's gospel. Now he turns back to what he's going to do. Now I know that none of you among you whom I've gone about preaching the kingdom of God will ever see me again. He's finished in the east, I think. His work in the east is done. He sees that. 
The rest of his work he sees in the Western Mediterranean. I think that's what he's saying in Romans 15. I'm coming to uh, uh, Rome, and I want you to be my missionary base. No longer is Antioch going to be my missionary base. Rome is his future missionary base, and then you can push me on to España. Uh, put me on, push me on to, in Greek, Spania, to Spain. Uh, and, uh, uh, no longer is Antioch going to be his, uh, his main supporting church. Rome is going to be his supporting church. He's finished in the east. I'm never going to see you again. That must have broken the hearts of some of these Ephesians. Therefore I declare to you I'm innocent of the blood of any of you. I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole counsel, the whole will of God. Now here's his ad admonition to him and to us. Keep watch over yourselves. Watch out, watch out for yourselves. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a dangerous neighborhood out there. Keep watch over yourselves. Don't get, uh, as, you're, as you're ministering among the down and outers, be careful, be careful. Keep watch for yourselves. I remember reading about the chaplain of Bourbon Street ministering, seeing so many prostitutes saved in New Orleans, and then boom, it happened. I don't need to tell you what happened. Keep watch over yourselves. You can get snared by the very people that you're ministering to. Keep watch over yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. And to the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Well, I'm not a bishop. I'm not an elder. I'm a woman. You've got a Bible study. You've got a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a group of kids that you teach on Sunday. You've got an Awana group. Keep watch over yourselves and over the flock. You say, I don't have any of those. Ah, how about your kids? <laughs> Keep watch over your flock. Over which the Lord has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God. Pastor the, sherp of, uh, the church of God. Which he bought with his own blood. It looks like the his here is referring back to God. Uh, be shepherds of the church of God which he bought with his own blood now watch I know that after I leave savage wolves will come in among you will not spare the flock even from your own number will men arise and distort the truth when you're ministering the word there may be cultists that come in from the outside there may even be people in your congregation who get some corner of the gospel, some corner of the truth, and they can't stop talking about it, and they become de uh, divisive. You've got to be watch out for the wolves coming in and destroying the flock, and you've got to keep your eye that, that people within the flock don't rise up with their own heresies, even from your own number. Be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day, again, with tears. Stiff upper lip, Paul didn't know anything about a stiff upper lip. His heart, like the Lord Jesus, was broken for people. Jesus wept. Paul wept. You don't have to work up emotions. If you really believe and love people, it'll well up within you sometime. How can you not preach with tears? Now, finally. I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Not covered in anybody's silver or gold. Then he, he, he uh, ends with a quotation from the Lord Jesus. One of those unwritten quotations in the Gospels. Blessed, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah, Jesus said that, but you won't find it in the Gospels. These are about between 15 and 20 uh, citations of oral teachings of Jesus that didn't make it into the written Gospels. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Now watch this. He finished speaking. He knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. Oh, how they loved this man. What grieved the most was his statement that they would never see his face again. A missionary preaches himself out of a job, folks. That's the, that's the nature of a church planner. He preaches himself out of his job because he's going on to found another church. He's going on somewhere else. And so he raises up this flock only to leave them. But he's leaving them in good care. I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. I've got to finish my course. Gang, you finish your course. course. The hearts are breaking. Paul is filled with... Un, you know, there's still some uncertainty. 
I don't know. Maybe they won't even accept the offering in Jerusalem. He even says that. He even says that in Romans 15. Pray that my offering will be acceptable to the saints. He wasn't certain of everything. The only thing he was certain of was what? That he's going to suffer hardship. Sometimes our lives, you know, this is the importance of faith, people. Because our lives are not charted out. We go on a vacation my wife has every day. Did you see that timeline she sent you? <laughs> so many, uh, you know, miles from Istanbul to Antalya, you know, so many hours, so many miles from Antalya to Denizli, and so, you know, that's my wife. We go on a vacation. We get our year's uh, membership in AAA in one visit to AAA. She comes back with guidebooks and everything like that, and I love it, you know. But you can't plan out all your life like that. There's uncertainties. <laughs> I know if my wife, if, if I said, wife, we're going on vacation, and she said, where are we going? I said, eh, just trust me. <laughs> that would take faith on her part. That would take faith. Because she's a planner. She's a planner. But there's certain things in our lives we can't plan. Your life is a tapestry. And let the one who's on the loom finish the tapestry. Don't you get brokenhearted and disappointed if you're looking at this side of the tapestry. What do you see? You see string sticking out, and you don't see any discernible pattern. It looks ugly. But let the one who's got you on the loom finish the tapestry, and you'll see someday how it all fits together. But right now, well, loose ends and ugliness. But stay on the tap. Stay on the loom. Finish the course. And so they, I can see them. He's pulling himself away from them. Going to the ship and they're following him. But they got to go on with their lives. And he's got to go on with his. And you got to trust God for the rest of your life. I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to be uh, able to build you up. What an scene filled with pathos, filled with drama. Finish the course. <laughs>